In the last video, we looked at the ask pattern, and we saw that when you call ask, you get back a future. There are a few things that are worth noting about futures and kind of some gotchas in, in Akka, uh, actually one in particular. It is also worth noting that one of the goals of the code you put inside of your actors is that it should not block. Okay, so if our actor were to uh, ask something of another actor, let's make another message here, case ask name of other, and we need to make a case class for this, case class ask name of other is an actor ref, and we'll need to import the actor ref. So this is telling an actor to ask the name of some other actor. Then when we use the ask, we're going to once again get back a uh, get back a future. So I can say other question ask name uh, sorry yeah ask name and so then f is a future of any which we can process on we can say uh, f dot my my f dot on complete and we'll have a case for a success and then we'll have another case for a failure uh, so a success we'll start off with just a success of s and a case for a failure of ex and then we can import and we want the scala util failure and the scala util success there but the thing that's coming inside of here is an any and so i actually kind of want to match this so we'll make it so that there is a success where s is specifically a name response and actually maybe we all call this an in r s p o n s e name response actually let's go with whoop, name response of n because it can be a pattern that will nest inside of there. S B. I'm still missing an S. There's our, there's our problem. Okay. In which case we get back a name response and N is bound to their name. And print line, they said their name was. Okay. Match may not be exhausted. Exhaustive case. Another success. And then we can say print line. <laughs> they didn't tell us their name. That would be if for some reason they responded for something, but something other than a name response. And then here, print line asking their name failed. Okay, so in order to demonstrate this code, we need, need to make a second actor, actor2. Two. Actor2 two will be named Val, and we are going to have Pat ask Val for Val's name. So we will come down here and we'll say actor bang ask name of and then actor2. Okay, so this is demonstrating 
how we can use the ask pattern where one actor is asking something of another actor. And we can come look here. Uh, invalid actor name exception. Oh, that is indeed correct. Let's number these. One, two. I cannot have... I'm going to give my actors names. I have to give them unique names. There we go. Uh, they said their name was Val. That's the response that we were, at, that we were looking for. Things to note about this. Uh, we never block as much as possible. So we get back a future. We work by you know calling on complete or for each or whatever. Uh, and those types of calls don't block. They just schedule more work to happen in the future. When you build a future around something, and so similarly, even if you're not asking, using the ask pattern, if your actor is going to do a long computation, it's actually very common to schedule a future. So you might do something where we produce a future in here, and I'm not importing this, so we'd have problems. One of the things that you can, that can cause you problems in Occam that you have to be very careful about is if inside of here you use sender, uh, and we send sender some message. Turns out that sender is a method. It's a def. And this can cause you problems because if this actor receives multiple messages, sender will change. And so by the time you actually use this future, it's possible that the sender will be different. For that reason, if you use sender inside of a future, and generally if you use sender inside of a closure, what you should do is make a val that stores the current value of sender and then use that val inside of your closure, inside of your future. That way you will always get the sender for the current message as opposed to a sender for, uh, for future messages. Another thing that can be noted here, so up here we brought in the Scala Concurrent Execution Context, Implicits Global, that allowed us to create futures. Let's go ahead and let's import Scala Concurrent Future, just so that we don't have an error message there. Another way of doing this, because all that we need is an execution context, this take gives us kind of the, the default Scala execution context. We can also get one for the current system. So instead of doing that there, what I can do is up here close to the top of this, I'm going to make an explicit val of an execution context. And it is going to be equal to my system dot, missing an S again, dispatcher. Okay, and then all of my errors go away. Uh, oh, actually, this would need to be placed inside of my Aka actor because I don't have. Uh, so I could put this inside of here, and then it works for the futures inside of here. Granted, the stuff outside of here, well, I could. There's my problem is that, uh, let's see, paste system is declared here, so I could also do that. Uh, for this one, I actually don't want to use system directly. I would be doing context.system.dispatcher, because the system there was referring to the variable outside, but I could do this generally inside of it. The advantage of this <clears throat> is that I'm using the Akka dispatcher for my threads, so that all of my futures are kind of inside of Akka's space. Uh, and it can handle things for balancing out the workload and whatnot. So this video covered a number of the details that you have to worry about when you're doing actors, things like the being careful in how you close over the sender. You know, uh, if you're going to close over the sender, make sure that you assign a val there. Also, the fact that you should not do too much work inside of your receive if you're going to do a whole lot of stuff that would block this actor, that would back it up, strongly consider putting that work inside of a future. Uh, and that way, you're, you're not holding things up for the actor system. Because remember, each, each actor can only respond to one message at a time. Now, it is possible that you want this actor to not do anything else until it's finished its current work. If that's the case, make it do it 
directly inside of there. But if the actor has the ability to be doing other work and not waiting for this to finish off, consider putting it inside of a future. That way the actor can keep doing other stuff, handling other messages, etc.